So it seemed a good idea to record a short piece to camera about what I'm thinking about computational thinking. What is computational thinking? Well, it's the way we look at a problem so that we can get a computer to help us solve it. Essentially, in computational thinking, we're looking for a way to solve a problem that's automatable, that's an approach to solving that problem that could be carried out repeatedly by some sort of computer, by an information processing agent, as Jeanette Wing describes it. So what we're looking for is not simply the solution to a problem, but a way of solving that problem that could be carried out, perhaps by a dumb machine or just by people following the instructions they're given. There are a number of parts to computational thinking, a number of building blocks of computational thinking that describe, that characterise that particular strategy for problem solving. I think there's a degree of unanimity that that should include things like abstraction, managing the complexity of the system, decomposition, breaking a solution down into a number of stages, a number of parts, recognising patterns or generalising a solution. So we look for common ways of solving similar problems. We look to solve a whole class of problems rather than just one particular problem. And algorithms, the sequence of steps, the sets of rules that we would want our information processing agent, our computer to follow. So there's a degree of unanimity over those four as components of computational thinking. We might add to that list logical reasoning and evaluation. We might even add to that list a number of approaches that we might take, as we did for barefoot computing, adding to those concepts, things like tinkering and creativity, debugging, persevering and collaborating, all of which typically characterise the work that programmers, that software engineers engage in when attempting to find an automatable solution to a problem. There's some division of opinion over what the information processing agent should be. For Tedra and Denning, for AHO, there's a very clear understanding that the information processing agent is a machine, is a computer. What we're looking for in computational thinking is a solution to a problem that a computer could then carry out. For others, and I would put Jeanette Wing and some of my friends at Computing at Schools into this group, they're less concerned about what that information processing agent is. And so they're very open to the idea that this approach to solving a problem, that solution that we get to is something which people can carry out to. It needn't be a machine that's carrying out that approach to solving the problem, that's carrying out that solution. And I think that distinction between is computational thinking something which prepares us for using a computer or which is a more general approach to problem solving has an impact in terms of the classroom practice that we see. If you take the view that computational thinking is about thinking about a problem so that we can make use of a computer in that solution, then you perhaps tie computational thinking very, very closely to programming to coding, the way we look at a problem, so that we can write some computer code, so that we can write a computer program. If you take the view that the solution is something that could be carried out by all sorts of information processing agents, then perhaps you go down the path of unplugged approaches and we have a sort of what is your algorithm for making a jam sandwich or what is your algorithm for playing the guess my number game. And so those different classroom approaches, I think, flow from your understanding or the understanding we have of what computational thinking is. There's one other point that I'd want to make, that those concepts, the building blocks of computational thinking, things like algorithms and abstraction, decomposition and pattern recognition, can be taught in isolation. I can teach children what an algorithm is by having them write down a recipe for jam sandwiches. I can teach them what abstraction is by having them compare perhaps a London underground map with the actual plan of London and where tube stations are in reality. There's an element of abstraction there. But that's teaching the building blocks. It's not teaching computational thinking itself. 
because you'll recall that our definition is computational thinking is about thinking about a problem so that we can come up with an automated solution. And the jam sandwich recipes and the London Underground maps aren't really about finding an automated way to solve problems. We can use both of those in that context. We could think about how would you make a robot or a production line make jam sandwiches. Or we might think about how do you find the shortest route across the London Underground network between any two stations. And once we're interested in solving that sort of problem, then we're into computational thinking rather than merely attempting to teach the building blocks. The building blocks are certainly things which we can teach across the curriculum. We teach abstraction and algorithms in maths lessons. We teach decomposition in language lessons. We teach pattern recognition in language, in music, in art, in many subjects in the curriculum. But I don't think any of these quite get to computational thinking because in no subject other than computing are we really interested in finding a solution to problems that can be automated.